I'm gonna go and take a little dip to cool off, cause it's hot. G'day, I'm Kama. And I'm Blowy. It's the Kama and Blowy show. Kama and Blowy. Kama and Blowy. Walking and talking. Kama and Blowy. Kama and Blowy. Good morning, David. How are you on this lovely day? Uh, it's not morning, Blowy. It's the afternoon, mate. Oh, look, it's the, um, the power of uh, video. I thought I was going to try and trick, um, trick some people, but... So, sorry about that. That's all right. I actually did make a mistake. I'll own it. Yeah. I'm crossing this um, cool bridge at the moment, and it's just over the Maribyrnong River, which is here. You can see um, the flowers are starting to um, bloom as it's um, spring. Um, but it's not officially spring, but the, um, the trees think it's spring, so we've tricked them. And what about you, Kama? Where are you? Um, so it's the heat of summer here, um, but I'm down at the local swimming hole. So I, it took me a little while to find this place, but I'm so glad I did. I come down here with my daughter a lot. It's nice and deep in here, crystal, clean, clear, cool water, and it's normally shady as well after about 10 a.m. So um, you don't have the blazing sun hitting you. You can swim in the shade. It's really nice. So I thought it'd be a nice place to start off today. Are you wearing your clothes at the moment? I am, but I plan after doing this walk to take a dip. Okay. So um, ma maybe I should take a little bit of footage of that at the end and uh, whack it on as a DVD extra. Or you can finish the podcast with that, you jumping in the water. Uh, probably not, because I've got all this other audio equipment. Yeah. The GoPro will be okay, but, uh... All right, well, it was worth a try, you know? And, um, you can probably hear all the cicadas as well. It's funny, because last time that, um, I, you, you edited the last episode and I sent you all the clips, and you told me afterwards, geez, those, uh, cicadas are loud. And, um, I kind of, it's almost like white noise for me, because I'm so used to them. I just, uh... Camera, can I just... There's some artwork here. Yeah. Well, it's not really artwork, but it's someone's put a VB bottle on a tree and they've done it so it kind of looks like art, but it's not real. Yeah. Didn't one of our fans send in a, uh, a VB beer bottle that had been modified to look like a um, camera and blowy? They did. They did. And so anyone who's on our Instagram page and saw that and didn't know what the reference was, it's an Australian beer from Victoria, Victorian bitter. So. Do you reckon you could say it's the Budweiser of Australia? I would say so. I would say so. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, to be honest with you all, uh, all this fan art is just coming from me and Blowy. <laughs> um, but I mean, that's pretty obvious if you read the captions anyway. We're not trying to hide it too, too hard. But um, we'd, be, we'd, we'd love it if you actually did, if a real fan, if we have any real fans, did submit some fan art. We definitely display it prominently on our, uh, our Twitter, our social media. All right, Cameron, now what I've got here is actually some, some cherry blossoms. Wow. Real cherry blossoms. And they're, um, these will fruit as well, these trees do. Lots of cherries. Um, I'm not sure about eating them though, because I think they actually poison. Um, I've seen them put poison up on the on the plants here, so. Ugh. Yeah. Who, who's they? The council. Brimbank. Brimbank City Council, yeah. Oh, no. How would you be? Go and eat a cherry and get in a mouthful of poison. Well, what if you're a kangaroo? Because there's kangaroos up here and they, they don't know about the poison, do they? I'm sure they'd sniff it out, yeah? Oh, I don't know. Don't know. Anyway. Yeah. I haven't seen many kangaroos jump up and eat um, cherries off the tree. No. They're quite high, yeah. I mean, they can jump well, but that sounds like, like I can't see it happening, to be honest. No, and if, if it did happen, it'd be quite cool to watch a kangaroo jumping up and eating a cherry out of the tree. I do remember seeing a news story, though, where um, I don't remember, there were wildlife rangers were pleading with people to stop feeding kangaroos carrots because they were getting a taste for them because, you know, they're nice and sweet. Because, uh, you know, normally they'll just eat grass and stuff. But all these people realised that they liked carrots and these, these, car these uh, kangaroos were getting addicted to the carrots. 
and their high uh, sugar content and they were becoming a problem because they were just coming up to people and coming right in their faces and getting a bit aggressive. Saying, give us a carrot. Yeah, pretty much. Give us a carrot, mate. Expecting carrots. And because they can't talk like a human, they can't communicate that they want a carrot, they would just, um, people would think they were getting attacked. But when in fact they're saying, excuse me, sir, do you have a carrot? Anyway, today I wanted to talk about something else that's kind of sweet and addictive. Uh, you like my little segue there? Yeah, lovely segue. Yeah. So today I, I'm going to tell you about the 100 ice cream cone story. Oh. And uh, well, it's not just me because Blowy was there as well. But this is kind of in my family, uh, my, amongst my friends, this is a bit of folklore, this story. It's quite famous. It's a uh, multi part. Now, we're going to go back to the year 1996, and I'd, I, I was just turned 18, I guess. Um, and we were in a skate team called Team Spinal Hazard, and we did all these skate demos. And at this particular point, we we're doing one at the annual Redcliffe show. So Redcliffe's a little town where we grew up, and each year about this time, they have a little show that goes for a week or so called the Redcliffe show. And if someone came from out of town and had a look, I don't think they'd be that impressed. But like at that time in the in the in Redcliffe, the local area, it was quite a big deal. All these uh, rides and things would come into the into the town for a week, and you know everyone who was everyone would go there on the Friday night, and there'd be all kinds of things happening. Oh, they'd have the best um, lamingtons in Redcliffe. Oh well, not not just limited to Redcliffe, there was also the greater Redcliffe. So, you know, there's some good lamingtons and good um, uh, fruit cakes as well. That's right. Hey Blowy, so there's still damage around from all these, uh, these recent storms. And I'm going to go under a tree that should have fallen on the road, but the power lines have basically stopped it from uh, falling on the road. So I'm going to walk under it pretty quickly. I don't want to linger around there too long. No, it sounds dangerous. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna, if, there's another one as well. Wow. That I'm going to go under. Yeah. So anyway, this is the Redcliffe Show. And I think maybe two or three years in a row that we'd, we'd been invited to um, do a demonstration there. They hired a little, a little uh, portable uh, half pipe. And we had like team shirts printed. They had like a yellow and red star on them. And it said Team Spinal Hazard. And... Uh, Anyway, we kind of do on the weekends maybe three shows, so there was always a bit of a gap between shows, and so we had some downtime. And um, just to give you a bit more background as well, at this stage of my life, I was really, I really like being a, a bit of a, an idiot, you know, a bit of, I love little pranks and things like that. Class clown, you were the class clown. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I think. If there was YouTube back then, we would have made a lot of stupid videos that uh, basically left a really bad digital footprint that uh, would kind of uh, get you in trouble if you're looking for a job or something afterwards. Just to give you an example, like uh, my friend Trevor and I, when we used to get into his car, rather than just getting in the car with the key and starting it, we'd always pretend that we were uh, breaking into it and hot wiring it. <laughs> so he's, he's, got, he's got the key, but um, we just kind of be yanking and then he'd slip the key in and hide it he'd be have his head down under the wheel and then he goes yeah i've got it started and then we'd uh you know race off but we were doing all kinds of silly things like that so we were always kind of thinking what's the what's the next stupid uh little uh oh a few multis around here as well what's the next stupid prank we could do and at that time tell everyone blowy what McDonald's had on offer for people who didn't have much money? Well, the one key item, that, um, this was the item to get the punters into the, into the door, was the 30 cent um, ice cream cone. And it was a soft serve cone. And look, it was a decent amount of soft serve they'd put on it. It was like a, a big, you know, the, I don't know what, if they call them soft serves everywhere, but in Australia we call them soft serve um, ice creams like that and it just um, in a little cone, but 30 cents was all it cost. Yeah, and at some stage, it occurred to me that 
it would only cost $30 to buy 100 of these ice cream cones. And so that, that for me just sounded like, that's pretty, like you wouldn't expect you could get 100 ice creams for 30 bucks, but you could. And cause just for the, just to give a bit of um, context here, um, Dave Kammer, sorry, was in the advanced maths class. This is how he knew that. <laughs> yeah, good one, Blowy. Obviously, maths, I, I got a high achievement. So uh, I, I wasn't that bad at maths when I chose to apply myself, but I, I generally didn't apply myself in high school. But that's another story altogether. Yeah, so there were these 30 cent ice cream cones. And, you know, we'd often be coming home from school or something, and we didn't really have much money, but we said, oh, you want to go and grab a cone at McDonald's? And we'd, we'd go there and, uh, you know, it's a nice, cheap little treat. But I also knew that you could get 100 for 30 bucks. And I said, at, at some stage, I wanted to do that. I just want to go in. And I just think it'd be funny to buy 100 ice cream cones. Another little um, tidbit there. I remember one day I went down to Hungry Jack's and just to save a bit of money, um, a, uh, a Whopper was like, say, um, $2, but a Whopper with cheese was $3. So I bought my own piece of cheese and I went down and bought a Whopper and put my own che cheese on there. Where did you buy a single slice of cheese? Oh, I had some in the fridge at home. Oh, so you went all, okay. Yeah. Uh, you, brought, you brought it, you didn't yeah, buy it. Yeah, took it with me. Yeah. And then save myself a dollar. Okay. Well, that requires a lot of uh, foresight. Yeah, but that's the kind of foresight that we had back then, especially with this 100 soft serve cones as well. Yeah. So I was actually working at McDonald's at this stage. Um, it was my first official like a uh, part-time job. And um, anyway, we'd finished a, um, a, a show and we had like, I think three or four hours until the next show. And so there's a few of us around, like we had the core team, there were probably eight of us or so, but there were also some younger kids who kind of hung around with us who were called, uh, what was their team called? Team Anarchy, was it? <laughs> yeah, Team Anarchy. Yeah. And so they were, they were the next generation. B grade. Uh, I, I wouldn't call them B grade, they were just younger. No, that's what we thought of them back then though. We were the A, a team and they were the B grade. Well, anyway, um, so... I thought, hey, if I can get 10 people now, we can maybe do that 100 ice cream thing today. And I looked around, and there are probably about 13 of us. I said, hey, guys, who wants to be part of history? And they're like, what is he talking about? I said, who's willing to chip in three bucks for one of the best experiences of your life? <laughs> and they're still like, what, what are you talking about? I said, look, I've always wanted to do this. Don't you think it'd be funny if we went to McDonald's and asked for 100 ice cream cones and we got them? There's, if we get 10 of us and we chuck in three bucks each, we can do this today. And um, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised how many people said, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it for sure. Well, it was, an, it was, an, it was a no-brainer. It was like an, an idea like, like those don't come along every day and we're like, 100, wow, that's like, movies are made out of things like that. <laughs> yeah, like 100 is a big number. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, I said, well, let's go. Now, there was a, a uh, McDonald's just like around the corner, basically. But that was the one that I worked at. And so I, was, I wasn't too keen to go down there and do it. So we said we'd go to the, the, the other one. And if you remember in episode 10, we had uh, Swami on, who's making a skateboard company. But he happened to work at this other one. But he didn't seem to mind that we'd go to his and... Uh, and uh, play this prank at his McDonald's store. No, he, he, Swami was quite happy to be the folklore. He actually, um, he embraced it and um, he went in there like proud. So it was, it was probably about three times the distance, but anyway, we strapped our skates on because we skated everywhere in those days. And uh, yeah, we got a group of 10 of us and we went down to the, uh, the Kippering shopping center and uh, we all went in there en masse. And I said, okay, everyone, time to pay up. Let's get some money. And everyone just had shrapnel, so little bits of coin and, you know, silver and maybe a gold coin here and there. But um, I had, I think I put it in my hat or something, but there was a lot of money in there and it was quite heavy, but there was, we counted it and there was 30 bucks in there. And so we kind of, we didn't really think at that point how we we're actually going to do the actual 
you know, the mechanics, the log logistics of actually going and getting the ice cream cones. But I was very happy when people basically said, look, Dave, this is your baby. Like, you can do the honors. And I looked around and everyone was in agreement. So I was like, oh, awesome. And I knew exactly how I was going to do it once I had that permission to, to be the one person to do it. So everyone kind of followed me up to the counter and it was my turn. And as I recall, there was a young lady who was probably 16 or something on the till that day. And she says, welcome to McDonald's. How are you today, sir? Said, oh, yeah, very good. Thank you. Said, how can I help you? And I looked up at the menu and stroked my chin for probably <laughs> five seconds or so. And I said, mm, can I please have uh, 100 ice cream cones? And she kind of had a little giggle. And <laughs> I said, no, sir, well, how can I help you today? I said, yeah, just 100 ice cream cones, please. And she's like, she just looks like, I cannot compute. I cannot compute. And... Um, I said, 100 ice cream cones. And she goes, I need to get my manager. And I'm thinking, wow, this is already, like it's already not really working as smoothly as I expected. And sure enough, she potted off and she came back with a, with a manager, the manager. Hey, Kama, can I stop you there for a second? Absolutely. I'm at the top of the hill and um, there's an amazing um, uh, rainbow. Double rainbow? No, it's just a single one, but it's quite girthy. It's got a lot of girth, and um, it's only, it doesn't go the full um, length. It's only about a, a semi, but it's got a lot of girth. Girth, length, semi. Yeah. Lovely uh, words you're using there, Blowy. Descriptive adjectives. Uh, girth is not an adjective. Okay, it's, gir it's, it's girthy. Okay. Anyway. I... I, I know you like the word girth. I've heard you use it a lot. More than anyone else I can, I can think of. Well, thank you, Kama. Thank you. Anyway, back to the story. So the, uh, the manager comes walking towards us. And she kind of looks like she's not too happy. And she, her tone as well is not really welcoming. And she goes, okay, what's, what's the problem here? And I was like, oh, I don't believe there's a problem. <laughs> And she goes, what, what's going on? I thought some joke about some ice creams or something. I said, oh, no, 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 no. We, I just tried to order 100 ice cream cones and she said she needed to get the manager. And she goes, what, is this a, is this a joke? I said, no, no, look. And I showed her the, the, all, the, all the coins. I said, 100 ice cream cones, 30 bucks. We just want to buy some ice cream. She goes, look, what, is this for a football team or something? I said, no, no, just for us. And she looked at us all there, us looking at her with big puppy dog eyes. And she goes, oh, look. Our ice cream machine can't even make 100 ice cream cones at one time. And I was like, well, we can't eat 100 ice creams at one time. So why don't you make as many as the uh, ice cream cone machine can make, and we'll eat them, then we'll come back and get the rest. And she goes, all right then. And um, she kind of nodded, so they took my money, and they started making ice cream cones. And if my memory serves me correctly, there were 48 ice creams made. And so we took them back to a table and started eating them. And so, you know, it was almost half there. So average of about five each. But hang on, I'll stop you there for a sec. They didn't just make 48, they, um, they made like six and then you brought over six and then kept, we kept going back and going back and back and they'd um, hand off another six and another six and another six. Okay. Yeah, we just kept passing them off, but then there was a total of um, 48. 48, okay. Yeah, and so anyway, we were, we're eating these ice creams and I'm looking around and I think, God, I, I've had like three or four or whatever and I'm, on, I'm not feeling so good. I don't think I can eat any more of these. And then I was like, yeah, I don't know. I said, what are we going to do with all the rest of them? And um, the best idea I heard at the time, uh, I think it was my idea, but the one that I was happiest with at the time, was that we could go into the car park and have an ice cream fight and just throw them at each other. Did, did you have any ideas at the time, Blowy? Well, I'll just, um, I don't know if you're going to get into this part, but it's quite crucial to the story, I believe. Um, and that was the reason why we only got, why we stopped at 48 was because the ice cream machine couldn't handle anymore. It, they had, um, 
it's got to wait like another hour before they could make any more because we'd used up all of the um, the frozen um, ice cream. So it was struggling. And if if we would have done this at your McDonald's, which I believe had multiple ice cream machines because it's a bigger one, they got drive through and stuff. This this story would have changed completely. It, our fate. And it wouldn't have been such a folklore. They would have just made the 100, went on the day. But because we chose this um, one at Kippering, I think it um, changed our lives. <laughs> yeah, okay. So think about, think about that, Kama. In any case, this 48 was way too many for us. We couldn't consume them all. Um, I'm a bit disappointed in myself now that I didn't think of like handing them out to random strangers in the, in the uh, shopping center. Like that didn't even cross my mind, that idea. Um, but it didn't, it didn't occur to me to do that. But anyway, we thought, okay, at the very least, we'll have a ice cream fight in the car park. So we went back to the, um, to the counter and the manager's like looking at us, goes, yeah, um, can we help you? I was, oh, just here to get the rest of the ice cream. She goes, no, no, I've already given you, I actually gave you an extra 18 as well. And I was like, what? Like, I just couldn't believe the audacity to not only say that we'd already received them all, but that she'd actually also made an extra 18 for us. Like that, just like, why, why would you go that far? It's punch in the face, that is. Kick in the nuts. Yeah, that's right. We had these incredulous looks on our face. And she goes, well, someone must have just kind of walked by and grabbed them then. I said, no, 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 we've been sitting over there. We would notice if somebody came by and took 70 ice creams. <laughs> we definitely notice. You don't just slip them in your pocket and walk off. But she was adamant. She went, no, no, no. Hi, hi. And I'm like, oh. But the thing was, I'd had enough to eat. The whole point really was not eating 100 ice creams, but more the act of ordering them. That was the whole point. Like it would have been good to have them all in front of us at one, at one point. But anyway, that was kind of that for me. I was like, okay, chapter closed. We've got a new, another show demo to do. Let's go back to the, um, let's go back to the show. So we headed back and we're kind of saying, oh, we were really upset with her though. I remember. Oh, she pissed me off so much. Yeah. I couldn't, couldn't sleep that night. <clears throat> sure. It was probably to do with the sugar high. But um, we got back to the show and so there was a local youth group called Yaka, Youth and Community Combined Action. It was an acronym. Uh, and they were kind of organizing the show. So there were a few youth workers there and they were really nice to us. These people as well, I think they were good because we were like 17, 18 at the time. And most kind of adults viewed us with suspicion. But these people in this youth group, they were actually looked out for us and they could, they could see past our kind of like uh, crazy haircuts and our our ragged clothes on everything and uh you know our screwed up facial expressions and everything and see you know there's some kids inside and they treated us with respect and gave us opportunities and everything but anyway one of them her name was kim she asked oh how you guys going what's been happening today and i said oh we just came back from mcdonald's and we told her the story and she was livid she was like what they can't do that to you and we're like well she did and she goes that's not on that is not Okay, we're gonna we're gonna write a letter to McDonald's, <laughs> and um, we're like, oh, radio, oh, whatever. And she goes, okay, tell me exactly what happened, every detail. And she kind of took notes. All right, was this at was this at twelve forty five um, p.m.? All right, yep. All right, so which table were you sitting on? Yep. All right, guys, and um, I need details here. Fine details. We didn't go into that much detail, but she got yeah all the times and numbers and everything right, and um, she then drafted a two page letter. <laughs> and got me to check it and it was all pretty much spot on except for she um she missed the spelling of my surname as lots of people do our surname is stewart but it's not ew it's u-a-r-t but other than that all the facts were in order and um yeah so basically we um she drafted up this letter and once we got a little once i gave her the okay she printed it out, I signed it, and uh, we sent it off to uh, McDonald's um, headquarters. And after that, like, I mean, I told a few people that story because it was pretty funny, 
But I don't think I even told them that we, oh yeah, and we're chasing it up with McDonald's or anything. I just, I don't think I even remember that. But um, a few weeks later, I was at work and the manager came in to me and said, hey Dave, can I can't see you in my office? And I was like, he never asked me to come and see him in his office. What's going on? Maybe I'm getting a promotion. Maybe I'm getting, they're going to make me store manager. <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't think that, but I had, I was honestly, had, I had no idea why. And he started off nice and stuff. Hey, um, how's everything going? Are you getting enough shifts? I said, oh, actually, I could do with a few more. And he said, okay, I'll try to, okay, I'll have a note to the people doing the rosters about that. I said, oh, thank you. And he said, okay. Um, and then he, his hand went under the desk and he pulled out a letter. I thought, I thought the story was going to go a different way just then for a second. Oh, good one, boy. It was, it was a bit, yeah. Oh. I'm going to go past, there's um, some people clearing some stuff, so there might be a bit of noise from uh, some power tools. The funny thing is walking around with this, it's always hard because people don't realize I'm on a conversation or recording an episode of the Cameron Blowy show. And they start talking to you. <laughs> they try and... Uh... What's your... Eat this girl. So, camera's just talking to people now. And, and this happens a lot, um, but usually it's before or after the show has started and Dave will be talking for like like 10 15 minutes sometimes while I'm on the phone um listening but you know it's all people there are so friendly that it's pretty funny they usually camera will get me involved in the conversation over the phone as well so and they're always really surprised to learn that my brother also speaks Japanese yeah and they usually talk to me a little bit it's funny Almost past. No. <laughs> okay, so I've gone past them all. Now, um, back to the story. So he pulls out this letter and he said, you know, I, um, I saw the name. I said, no, it can't possibly be. But then I went and, went and checked against the records and I said, yeah, this is the same David. He goes, mate, what's this all about? You know, the manager is in serious trouble now and she's probably going to lose her job over this. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, I kind of completely forgotten about this. But, you know, bubbling away in the background. And when I heard that, I was like, well, I mean, I don't particularly want her to lose her job, but, you know, if she's ripping off customers, I mean, <laughs> it's not as if she, do she doesn't deserve it. And um, he handed me the telephone and um, I hear someone on the other end and it's a young lady. She would, have been, she would have been five years older than me, I guess. And she's crying on the other end of the floor, on the other, sorry, on the other end of the phone. And she goes, oh, it was a mistake. There's no, I didn't, someone must have taken them. I was like, no, even now, she's still sticking to the original story. Like her, um, the story that someone took them. I said, there's no, <laughs> like we were sitting right there. We definitely noticed if someone poured all these extra cones and put them there and someone walked off with them all, there's no way it happened. But she wasn't, she wasn't budging. And I was like, okay, look, I don't want her to lose her job over this. Like. I, I, I mean, I think she should uh, basically have to live with whatever consequences her actions have, but I'm not going to, it was almost like on me. Like, okay, Dave, it's up to you. Do you want her to lose your job? You gotta be the bigger man. You gotta be the bigger man here, big camo. They call you big camo, are you really that big? Show us. So anyway, I basically said, look, okay, look, you're not gonna, obviously you're still gonna stick to this story, but I'll withdraw my complaint, that's fine. And uh, the manager says, oh, good on you, mate, that you did the right thing. There's some mix up, obviously. And he goes, now, as a way of just saying thank you, I'm going to, uh, you can have two meals at a time of your choice. <laughs> and, and like two, two set meals, two combo meals or whatever. Yeah, uh, two happy meals. Not, not large, just small, small meals. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I was like, okay, whatever. I wasn't really like jumping over the moon for that or anything, but um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a bad outcome for me. And um, anyway, so I went back and told a couple of the boys about this, uh, this story, and they said, you sell out, you <laughs> absolute sell out. You sold us all out for a couple of burger meals. I said, look, guys, I withdrew my complaint. There's still another nine people. I can't withdraw your complaints. So you're free to, um, get in touch and, you know, take this as far as you want to. So, I'm not selling anyone out. I saw, maybe I sold myself out, I'll, I'll wear that, but I didn't sell anyone else out because I can only talk on my own behalf. So guys, you're free to pursue this if you want. 
and then strangely they all kind of went quiet as a church mouse and uh they'll, oh no i mean you, i mean if you want to oh, i guess you yeah you can have your meal if you want but um yeah that's pretty much how the story ends and um yeah i've uh I've told this so many times, sometimes at parties, I'll actually get out the letter because I've still got a copy of the letter. Can you put that uh, on um, Twitter? Yeah, there'll be, some, there'll be names and stuff blacked out, but yeah. Black it out, yeah. To protect the, to protect the guilty. Yeah. But the other interesting part about this, um, about this uh, whole episode is that um, AJ, who was kind of looking after us in that youth group, she, um, she, she and I have reconnected on, on, online and everything. So I asked her, hey, who was that, um, the Kim lady who, uh, who wrote that letter for us? And she goes, oh, Kim Wilkins. You know, she's like a famous author now. And I was like, no, I didn't. So I got in touch with her on Twitter. I said, hey, Kim, do you remember writing this? <laughs> and sent her, um, and she actually didn't remember it. Really? And I was thinking, she must live a very exciting life if you don't even remember that, because I'm... Um, that's something I think you tend to remember, the 100 ice cream story. Oh, that's a pivot point in your life. That's, yeah. that's um, a big deal. So I haven't read any of her um, novels, but I, I consider that letter one of some of her best writing. Yeah, well, it, um, and it was only um, let down by you being a sellout. That's right, yeah. But I mean, Blowy, if you want to pursue this, I mean, I withdrew my complaint, but uh, even though it's 25 years ago, Look, it was the complaint, I believe, the complaint was on behalf of all of us. Because it was all of our money, you see? Yeah, but I mean, I only signed with my name. Look, I, I don't want to get into an argument on Cameron Blowy show about this, but it's bringing up some, um, some uh, memories here. So let's, let's just end it on that, hey? Radio Blowy. Okay. Right, camera, let's, I'm going to punch, punch the camera. Okay. Like, like it's a soft serve cone. Okay, mate. Catch you later. On. You ready? On? Uh, boom. G'day, I'm Kammer. And I'm Blowy. It's the Kammer and Blowy show. Kammer and Blowy.